have had some technical problem. problem, problem. Reveal one, reveal two. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. <laughs> Happy Rabbit Rabbit Day. We're halfway through the week and ready to have a great show with you today. Today is Huddle Cam HD Let's Chat Live, episode three. And we're talking about something that is a user request. You guys requested this one. How do we use multiple cameras the best way in video conferencing, video production settings? So here we go. I was thinking about this and I was thinking, all right, so what's the best way? There really are lots of different ways to do this. We could have multiple USB cameras in the same computer. We could have multiple computers with different webcams on the same conference meeting, if you will, in the cloud. And then we can do it a different way of having a USB video mixer. So we're gonna look at each of the different approaches in today's show. Can't wait to go over it with you guys. Let's get started. So just to jump things off, we're gonna be talking about USB video conferencing with Skype. Zoom and GoToMeeting and WebEx. All of these tactics will work with those software and more, such as BlueJeans and others. Returning viewers and new viewers, we're so happy to have you guys with us here today. We are live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Facebook and YouTube at HuddleCam HD. Also, it's worth noting that we do have a user group on Facebook. You go to facebook.com slash group slash HuddleCam HD to join the family and really have extra questions, want to chat with us, it's a great place to do that. So let's get started. We have a great presentation to go over today. Let's get into it. So we're talking about how to use multiple cameras, and we actually have three approaches. I don't know if Tess, you want to put this on the whiteboard for us. Yeah, why don't we do that? There. Um, the three different approaches that we have for using multiple cameras. Uh, approach number one is connecting multiple USB cameras to your same PC. Now, this is good. It's actually a great way to do it. It's probably the most affordable way, um, but you have to have the USB bandwidth to do so. So if you're using USB 3.0 cameras, uh, you need to have USB 3.0 ports, obviously, to take advantage of that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that soon. Number two is you can actually use multiple computers. Okay, so two computers, let's say two computers in the same room, both of them have webcams attached to them and uh, you can actually just switch in the cloud, if you will. Now, this doesn't work when you have active speaker on, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but that's approach number two. And then number three, not sure if you guys have heard of this, but I call it a USB video mixer. This is a video mixer that can mix together multiple cameras into a USB input, and that USB input in your computer is pulled up in Skype, GoToMeeting, or WebEx. That's the most expensive way, but it's actually a really great way to do it. Thank you, Tess. Surely, you got it. And as you can see, we're using our Huddle Cam HD joystick here, and that's gonna come up in our conversations as well. So let's take a closer look. So when we're connecting multiple USB cameras into our um, meeting software, there's a couple com uh, things we gotta think about. One is, how are we gonna control? These, IR, these, uh, these cameras, one option is the IR remote. Yes, each of our HuddleCam HD PTZ cameras do come with an IR remote included in the box. Great tool for you initially when controlling your cameras. Why don't we go ahead and show how the IR remote works for HuddleCam? Sure. So let's show off the remote in the, on a close-up camera. And we'll pull it up here. So this is what the remote looks like. You can see on the top that there are three camera select buttons. Boop, not the right tool, sorry. Um, and those camera selects allow you to control up to three HuddleCam HD cameras, but you have to remember, I don't know if you can show them, Tess, on the back of the camera, we do need to have the IR select, what would you call that, dial? Select switch. The select switch. You can see there's the right one, one through three. Now, Simple switch here. Keep in mind that as you switch one, two, and three, you do need to reboot the camera. So do this before your conference. Don't hit that switch button at the end there. But I wanted to demonstrate this really quickly. Uh, as you can see here, I have camera one selected, right? And that is controlling my Huddle Cam 3X here. And then I have camera two selected. That's controlling my Huddle Cam 10X. So just, just to give you an idea of how that works. Now the next option, 
is the joystick controller, as you guys saw uh, us using just a moment ago as uh, I was being tracked around and Tess was being tracked around a little bit there. That is a great way to grab control of multiple cameras. If you do have multiple cameras in your meeting space, in your conference space, um, that is how it works. So there it is there. You can control multiple cameras. And I don't know if maybe you just zoom in a little bit or just show how it works there. We have the pan speed set to a kind of slow speed because we're not running around too much, uh, but the cameras can go um, in variable pan, tilt, and zoom speeds. So moving on, so how do we actually switch the cameras inside Skype, GoToMeeting, or WebEx? Well, here is Skype here, and as you can see, you can do a camera drop down and you can switch between the cameras. So this is in the video settings menu, and that's generally where you'll find the ability to switch between multiple USB cameras, whether it's Skype, GoToMeeting, or WebEx. So that will have access to any USB camera plugged into your PC. Yes. Okay. And I thought it would be a, a good idea to go ahead and show an example of this inside Zoom video conference. So here we are here. I believe this is our makeshift meeting X camera here. And one of the things I wanted to show is at the bottom of this Zoom, this is Zoom video conferencing, there's a little uh, drop down that allows you to access all the cameras that you have. And I really like this. I didn't have enough time to look to see if the GoToMeeting and WebEx have this as well. Mm -hmm. But see, it says Alt plus N to switch cameras. Ah, so you don't actually have to access the drop down menu? Yeah, so if you're just Alt doing N. this, Alt N, and boom, we have now switched cameras. Nice. Boom. So just a little example of how you could do some, some switching in this regard. Now, I wanted to briefly talk about why so many people are using multiple cameras. And one uh, potential reason is to have a document camera or a ceiling camera. Got and it. I was thinking maybe we could show uh, our overhead shot to show people what it looks like. So here we have our IR remote that we were looking at. And maybe you want to annotate on top of a document to show how you can do the presets and the zooming. Um, so maybe you have you know document plans here. Maybe you're an architect. You're showing, showing plans, showing a product. Uh, but that's just one way that you can use a ceiling camera. So it's becoming a lot more popular, especially if you're doing a webinar or a business presentation uh, or anything where you want to really show something uh, from a top-down perspective. So now another way to do the switching is to have a software in the background. And we have a couple different options for you. One is for Mac. That's the Cam Twist. But the other two for... Um, for PC, we have ManyCam and we have SparkoCam and also Wirecast will work. Uh, these are softwares that will output the video that you uh, want into your video conferencing software. So it allows you to do a, quite a bit of extra video switching in the background. Got your own mini production here within your meeting. Yeah, I mean, you really can disguise the limit. Uh, this is another easy one. And here's one that I wanted to run by you guys. because I think it's kind of interesting. So if you've got a uh, computer in your conference room or meeting space, you can join the meeting with your smartphone as well. Mm -hmm. So you could use your smartphone as a secondary camera. You could bring a secondary laptop into the room. So you could add a second camera to the space. So if you needed to walk away from the space and show them something that isn't in the camera's view, maybe? Yeah, yeah or you something could do that, wireless. Yeah, that would be too far away from the camera, anything like that. So it's quite nice. That's another way to do it. And just remember, this will give you multiple simultaneous views in the same meeting, which is great. But some people use something called active speaker. I don't know if you've heard of that. But essentially, an active that? speaker is on during your meeting. Whoever's microphone is being used is shown full screen. Ah, Zoom has that, right? Zoom has that. Other video conferencing softwares have that. And if, it's, if someone's using that and you're speaking to the same microphone and camera input, but then you've got your phone over here, it might not switch to that phone. Mm -hmm. Or you might have two microphones live, which you don't want because you would get echo. You'd need the huddle cam huddle view for that. Yes, you'd want to have the huddle cam huddle view, which would frame up your, your system for you. So number three would be to use a video mixer. This is the expensive way to do it, but it is an option I wanted to talk about because this, something like this, this is a Roland VR50 HD. There's also other ones out there on the market. What they'll do is they'll take three, four, or five. I think one of these has two HDMI, two composite, two components, four SDI inputs. 
XLR inputs. So you could have multiple cameras coming into this device and it just plugs in USB to your computer. That's serious stuff. Yeah. So it's a lot of, uh, but the benefits are professional transitions, potentially a touchscreen interface, mixing audio and video all in one easy mixer. So time for the live demo. This was the live demo. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everybody. We're happy to take questions at this point. Those are three ways to use um, multiple cameras in your video conferencing software, whether it be GoToMeeting, WebEx, Skype, or Zoom. Really, whichever is your preference. Yeah. A couple comments here that we can share with our live audience, because remember, we are live on Facebook and YouTube right now. Larry says we've done this with Zoom and Wirecast, as Paul outlined. It worked great. Larry, let us know exactly uh, what your purpose was for doing that so we can share some of the benefits with our audience. Hello, special shout out to Larry and Michael and Kenneth and Dwight and Rudy. Thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate your continued dedication. And that's about it for us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our show, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. If you had any questions about our presentation style, the way that we put on this um, show or the content inside, feel free to join our user group at facebook.com slash groups slash huddlecamhd. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.